The recent market turmoil not just shaking up some of the biggest stocks, it also has shaken up the IPO market. Leslie Pickers back at headquarters with more. Hey, Les. Hey, Melissa. There's a recipe for the perfect market conditions to going public. Low volatility, rising equities. And last week, if you recall, we saw the exact opposite of that. So it's no surprise we saw the most number of IPOs withdrawn last week than any other week this year. According to DealLogic, five IPOs were pulled globally, two in Hong Kong, one in Madrid, one in Lisbon, and one in Helsinki. These include deals that were already in the middle of their roadshows marketing shares to investors. On top of that, two other companies postponed their deals before even getting to the roadshow stage. Those included Lease Plan, which was floating shares in Amsterdam and Brussels, and Tencent Music, which also was spooked by the market turmoil. The company is postponing its roadshow until November, the Wall Street Journal reported, due to the recent sell-off in the markets. Now, large price swings in particular can make it very difficult to price deals, making it more likely that the underwriters and the company agree on a price that, in the long run, isn't actually suitable. And stock market declines, like we saw last week, can spook prospective investors because the risk-off mode makes them less inclined to actually buy into a company's debut, which can be among the more risky areas of the market, Melissa. All right, Leslie, thanks. Leslie Picker at headquarters. For more, let's bring in Rick Heitzman. He's a founder, founder and managing director of First Mark Capital and was an early investor in Airbnb and Pinterest. Rick, good to have you with us. Thanks for having me back. Um, obviously, market conditions are important for IPO. So how would you characterize these market conditions? And if you were advising a startup on whether or not the time is now, would now be a time? Now is the time. I think that uh, this might be temporary. From a startup point, we think in longer time horizons. We're a holder for eight to ten years of companies that go public. So a few days of volatility shouldn't really impact that. We're thinking about a year, two years out, the lockup's over, and is the company appropriately priced? So when you're thinking about some of these IPOs, are they selling 15 percent, 20 percent of the public? I mean, that it's, must it's weigh It's usually smaller. We were right here last week uh, with Upwork. And they, they sold a much uh, smaller percent. Companies are staying private longer and actually tend to be profitable or at least self-sustaining. So they don't need the financing element of these IPOs. Were you nervous? I mean, you said you were with the company last week yes. that went public. Yes. Was that hand-wringing for you? It, it's not really hand-wringing. I think uh -huh. you prepare the company, you, you do your best, and you assume the market will take care of itself like any other great big project you're working on. Rick, do you sense that we've gone through a structural change, though, in the market and how companies are treating the capital market cycle? You guys are playing a very different role than you might have even been able to a decade ago. Is it, is it different today than it was for, for private companies? It, much, much different. Companies are staying private much longer, maybe two to three times longer. Yeah. Think about Microsoft and Cisco were private companies for two, three years. Now you're looking at the next generation of great companies being private for 10, 12 years. And what that means is, there's less volatility when they come out. They have a pretty good sense of their revenue, pretty good sense of their expenses, and mm -hmm. oftentimes are profitable. Yeah. Therefore, both less risk and less reward for public market investors. Rick, is it as clear or as simple as the analysis of looking at international companies versus domestic companies? International markets have been extremely challenged. Does that pull forward, in your opinion, all of the domestic need for an IPO because they want to capture what could be the top in the U.S. market versus what could be the low in the international market? Uh, I'll start by saying I know almost nothing about the international market. So, but th saying that, I know that people are drawn towards some of the biggest names of the domestic market, names that people have talked about uh, being potential 1920 IPO candidates like Uber, and people want to participate in the market leaders, and they've looked at the disruption that names like uh, Twitter and Facebook have caused in the last couple of years. And they want to participate in those potential 10x IPOs. We're looking at the stock market. I'm not asking you to play stock market, but are you seeing anything from where your vantage point that concerns you in terms of what's happening here in the U.S. equity market? Uh, the only thing that we have not seen yet, and I saw in a cycle in 1999 and saw it to a lesser extent in 07, is poor quality companies going public. And we have not yet seen that. If you even you look at the smaller IPOs of the last couple of months, there were still solid companies with good business models on a path to profitability, if not already profitable. So you're not seeing a degradation of quality, which I think symbolizes the end of a cycle. All right, Rick, great to see you. Thanks, Thanks for your time. For Rick Heitzman, Thank you. First Mark Capital. Uh, in terms of what you've seen on the floor, you've seen a lot of high-profile IPOs, and they seem to do 
quite well. Even yeah, though I, I don't see any rocking. slowdown. Obviously, the volatility in the marketplace is always something that goes into the calculus of an IPO or not. But I haven't seen any slowdown in IPOs that have been rolling out. You will see the IPOs that are coming from like a Tencent that's doing a spin out or spin off. Their markets have been under pressure. So you could see why they'll postpone those. But I haven't seen anything with the domestic U.S. market. We often talk about IPOs not only because eventually they will become stocks that we talk about on this show, but also because they could be indicators of the overall market and market conditions. Is that your thought in asking Rick the question? It is a thought. I understand exactly what Rick is saying, but it's always, it's never the same as it was 9907. Right. So I don't think necessarily what he's saying, I don't think it has that much impact on the broader market, on my negativity in the broader market.